Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 4th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just before Christmas, we had a story about LG TVs apparently getting affected by a ransomware. Well, in this case, it was a certain type of TV that actually ran Android. And uh, these TVs were infected by the same ransomware as all other Android devices if you install a malicious app. In this particular case, the owner installed an app that promised free videos. Now, the problem with these TVs is that there are no published factory reset instructions. So essentially, you're stuck with this TV. The only thing it will display after the ransomware runs is a fake FBI notice, essentially asking you to pay a ransom to have your TV unlocked, which actually in the case of a TV isn't actually all that easy to do. A user affected by this contacted LG and initially got a rather expensive repair estimate but eventually LG went ahead and now published the factory reset instructions for this TV. In case this ever happens to you or one of your relatives friends I'll link to a video showing these instructions in the show notes. And then we got an update for LibPNG. Now, this is one of the basic graphic libraries for Linux, as the name implies it's used for PNG images. And the vulnerability is triggered by first adding a text structure to an image, removing it, and then adding another one. Now, as the note about the bug explains, this is rather unlikely to happen, but as they say, it has happened. Not clear if uh, this was actually exploited as part of an attack or if just someone ran into uh, this vulnerability while writing some PNG related code. Updated versions of this library should already be available for all common Linux distributions, so apply the patch as soon as you get to it. And then we have yet another vulnerability related to security software intercepting SSL traffic. Now, uh, this has become more and more standard that personal security software that you install on your system does intercept SSL traffic. It does this by installing a trusted certificate authority and then just recreating certificates for all the SSL websites that it intercepts. Now, the problem here is that creating these SSL certificates is computer computationally somewhat expensive. So of course the security software is trying to cache uh, those certificates. And then if you're connecting to the same site over and over, it can reuse uh, these certificates. The problem with Kaspersky is that it uses a 32-bit index in order to figure out whether or not a particular certificate was already used. So 32 bits gives you 4 billion different certificates, which is a reasonably large number, but something not too difficult to brute force. So you can impersonate a trusted website by creating a malicious website that uses certificate with that same 32-bit hash. As the researcher who found this issue points out, there are actually some valid certificates out in the wild that are affected by this that have the same 32-bit hash. And as a result, actually, you may have some issues connecting to some of these sites if you are running Kaspersky's anti-malware solution. I haven't seen anything about a patch being available from Kaspersky, but uh, if you see a patch being offered by Kaspersky, this may be one or the vulnerability that's being addressed by this patch. And if you're using Thunderbird, there's a new version available for you fixing a couple of critical flaws that could allow for remote code execution. So something you probably want to update rather quickly. No exploit available in the wild as far as I know. But uh, then again, uh, these exploits are typically released relatively quickly after such a vulnerability has become known. And then as a reminder for any listeners in Europe, I'll be teaching the intrusion detection in depth class in Brussels starting January 16th. So not too late to register for that. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.